Hello viewers, I am Tanzina Chodeshi Chhi Lighten Nature IT Bishish Porbe, Amon Jun Bektito Ke Shathe Niye, Jini Agam Bhinno Iti Pesha Niyo Jito, Onu Karo Niyo, Ebang Drishwa Tuk Purush Niyo Jito Shama Jhe, Tad Medha Strong Ebang Harna Mana Projeshta Ke Kaje Lagye, Aapu Nadoya Aadu Kito. Aamadhe Shathe, Aja Chhe Anita Rabbani, Visit Yoga Instructor and Health Coach. She believes that the knowledge that physical strength leads to mental strength and uh, she is working relentlessly to empower the women by allowing themselves to become the healthiest, strong and the best version of themselves. Welcome to our program. How are you ma'am? I'm fine, thank you. You can call me Anika. We are looking gorgeous. First of all, I would like to know uh, what's the secret of your uh, beauty? I mean, you look so energetic and young. Thank you. I think it's good genes. Is there any impact of your yoga practice? Um, yeah, because um, because I practice yoga, I have a very regimental lifestyle. I'm very disciplined, so I go to sleep very early at night. I wake up very early in the morning. Um, I eat very healthy. I practice yoga. I don't mix with too many people. <laughs> I think. And I'm sure uh, our audience would like to know how to remain green in mind at the age of 60. I'm not 60 yet. <laughs> uh, but, uh, people would like to be young um, because I have seen a, a lady who is 100 years yeah. old and she's a, a yoga instructor right. and she's very energetic. Did you see the one in India or the one in America? Uh, in America. In America. There's also a, an Indian one. Um, I think when you practice yoga, when you practice meditation, your life becomes a lot simpler. You are less complicated in your thinking. So you get a lot of peace of mind and I think peace of mind is very important in today's world because there's a lot of stress involved even when you go out into the street there's so much traffic there's so many people especially in a city like Dhaka or any major big city so I feel like yoga helps you find that silence that peace of mind which helps you stay young stay energetic like you don't waste your energy as far as I know that uh, you have studied English literature and then development and then move on to India for uh, formal training on yoga yeah. so uh, how do you describe the journey um, it's been a journey of mostly self-exploration. I'm very curious about my role in the world. Um, I really like to read. I like books. I like um, good literature. So I studied literature. I knew there was no money in it. <laughs> but I studied literature and then Tarpur, after I graduated, I did my Masters in Development Studies, which are incomplete. I haven't finished them. But I worked in development for nearly a decade. And following that, after I had my daughter, after I became a single mother, I started. I decided I want to give more time to my daughter. I didn't have time to make field visits and such. So in Jyote, on field, field visit to so I couldn't do that so I decided okay let me start teaching yoga full-time in the midst of that I also witnessed a great majority of disasters natural disasters like cyclone sitter cyclone Isla while I was working in development you see these disasters at close quarters and they really affect you emotionally you know and the final one that I saw was Rana Plaza so the Rana Plaza collapse um, it affected me very personally because I went out as a volunteer with the Jago Foundation to go and help um, some of the victims and I still remember the collapsed building, the sights, the sounds, the smell of rotting bodies and I feel like it had a very profound impact on me as an individual. As an individual I'm very sensitive so uh, it had an impact on me and I decided that I no longer want a 9 to 5 job, I want to do something that brings me a lot more fulfillment and I feel like I'm helping people doing what I do. So uh, you are saying that yoga is uh, one of the things which helps to get uh, out of trauma, right? Definitely. So uh, how does it help actually? Well, yoga is like a, it's like taking a small journey. When you're doing yoga, it's like you, you are transformed into another reality altogether. A reality which is not present when you're in your normal state, when you're having a conversation or having a drink with a friend. So yoga happens, yoga is a union, yog. So the union, the mind, the, the, the mind, the body, the breath, right? These are all the things that exist. But in order to really experience yoga, you have to do it. You have to really get into the moment. It's not just about moving your muscles or your limbs. It's also about learning to control your breathing, learning to calm down the mind. It's about being present. So in the, if you're here right now and if you're on your cell phone, you know, or if you're um, 
somewhere else. So nothing is changing. Because then the yoga is not here. Someone very unfit and very. Um, you know, not flexible can also be doing yoga. Someone very old can be doing yoga. It's all about the sense of presence. How do you differentiate uh, yoga from uh normal uh, exercise or physical exercise? So yoga is similar to gymnastics. You know, there's a lot of movement. You know, gymnastics is similar to yoga. But yoga employs breathing techniques. So that's what sets it, up, sets it apart because the breathing takes you into a transcendental state. You know, you completely move to a different dimension of consciousness. So uh, I would like to know that uh, what are the some challenges uh, you are facing or you have already faced uh, as a yoga teacher. Okay, so the first thing I would say is if you're planning to be a yoga teacher, um, know that there is not a lot of money in it because you're um, you're passionate and you're devoted to the practice of yoga. So Age Kardine, yoga yoga teachers Rajara Yoga Shikato, they were um, they were beggars. So my teacher's teacher who was his grandfather um, went around from city to city begging for a living you know so and people used to give them space to teach so when you plan to take up yoga as a life journey you don't expect to become very rich that's number one you don't uh, you don't get to meet a lot of friends because it's a it's a secluded lifestyle that you lead that you're meant to lead um, you um, you're not widely accepted in a country like Bangladesh because people think you're doing something that is quite heretic in nature. Um, they they mistrust you a because you're a woman, you know, with different ideas who might encourage other women to have different ideas and go out into the world on their own and do very very radical things. Um, these are some of the challenges, but on the whole. I find that people really love me. Uh, I went to this event and three girls came up and they were they were so appreciative of my work and they told me how much they like following me on Instagram and how much they like the work that I do and I, I really feel good when I hear younger girls you know coming up to me saying that they admire me for what I do. I feel very empowered and I feel like I want to do more of this. When you started mostly you uh, the foreigners were your students so yeah. now you are dealing with Bangladeshi students as Predominantly well. so, Bangladeshis, yes. So uh, what's the reason behind this? I mean uh, how do you see this? People are so the Holy Bakery terrorist attacks happened and Tarpore maximum of my students had to leave the country. So I attribute that as one of the reasons and then the second reason is that I used to earlier on teach at the expat clubs the international clubs that are here um, nowadays I don't teach at the expat clubs I teach uh, in places owned by locals and so I get a lot of local students and I also target my marketing to reach more local students in areas like Dhanmundi, areas like Kilgao. Ebong amar ekta student to eshchilo o protek weekend ashto Rangamati theke bus thore ashto just to do the class. She did it for one month. But for me that was so encouraging, you know, to see Jay, this is available, it's for everyone. It's not just for the rich people of the Gulshan, Bonani, Baridharas areas who wear fancy clothes and have fancy mats. It's definitely not for them, it's inclusive. And I want people from the other areas of Bangladesh to come and join my classes. People started loving yoga and uh, more people are embracing yoga worldwide and uh, the United Nations has proclaimed 21st June as the International Day of Yoga. The world is working for raising awareness. Mm -hmm. What would you say to our audience today uh, about the benefits of yoga? Why should they join yoga class? Well, the benefits of yoga can be felt once someone actually does yoga and not just agdin dudin, but they do it consistently, like for one or two years. Agekar Dine, before the British invaded our country, um, yoga and Ayurveda were used as to manage diseases or symptoms. My teacher's teacher's teacher, Tirumalai Krishnamacharya, cured the king of Mysore, who was very ill, and the king of Mysore was so grateful to him that he let him teach in his palace. You know, and that's how yoga, you know, and the kind of yoga that was taught, Tokhun was taught to young boys because young boys have a lot of energy, teenage boys, or they can calm down, you know. Later on, what happened was the West adopted this form of yoga. So you had famous celebrities like Madonna, like Sting, um, Kupko famous Beastie Boys, 
or their lead singer, Tapper, William, William Defo, you know, a lot of famous Western celebrities started to do yoga. And then it became very popular in the West and now it's as though the West owns yoga. And it's like we, um, as Bangladeshis, Amra Purupuri Bichinno Hoi from the practice of yoga. Whereas back in the day, traditionally, there were the Nath sect of yogis who were very predominant in areas like Dhaka, Memon Singh, Chittagong, Silet, Noakali. Bhortik into yogis chilo. And now they've completely disappeared and there's not even a trace of their history remaining. So we should, uh, we should understand that yoga actually belongs to us. It originally belonged to us. Now it belongs to everyone. Yoga is for everyone. But you have to understand there's a business aspect of yoga and there's a real love of yoga. You know, there's a passion for yoga. So, and this passion can belong to anyone from any country. But the sad part is that our history has been completely erased. You know, our, our history, our attachment to yoga, which is there from the very beginning, is completely gone. Like if you look at the seals from the Indus Valley Civilization, you'll see that there are people doing yoga in those seals. Uh, Mohenjadaro Indus Valley Civilization. And there's even a skeleton they found sitting in a Padmasana. Now uh, India is promoting mostly, right? That's politics. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, would, would you like to share uh, some tips and tricks uh, to relieve the uh, of, I mean, stress of uh, long working hours at office yeah you How can to, uh, uh, you can do some really easy poses like balasana shesda devarmoto and it's it's surprising to see the parallels between namaspara and yoga kora i hope nobody gets really mad at me for saying it um, but um, balasana is really nice for back pain you can do bhujangasana you can do Urdhva Mukha Savasana, you can do so many poses. So, should the back pain, you know, re energize Korba, you know, Bibino Dharne Pranayama, Jamon Dharan Kopal Bhati Pranayama, on a energy ashe, or Anuluma Viloma Pranayama, on a calm down high sthir hai. So, the different forms of Pranayama, uh, these are very popular ones. YouTube, Gale, search Kuli Pawaje, Pase Ashlo, you can learn from a teacher. I think it's best when you learn yoga from a teacher because yoga is, it, the teaching of yoga is in the system of parampara, which is from guru to shishya, from teacher to student. So that's how you learn. Most often uh, we heard that people are watching television or YouTube and practicing yoga and that might cause um, injury. Not necessarily. I mean, crazy injury. Okay, so uh, do you say, uh, what would be your suggestion for them? If they cannot afford a yoga class, then that's fine. If they cannot afford the commute, because Dhakashwaronic traffic, and then that's fine. So, uh, how expensive it is to learn yoga from you? It's a little expensive, you know, because I want them to A, take it seriously. I mean, when they park yoga, they thought it was a good thing. 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 I would like to be known as someone who is more than it's beautiful no more than beautiful you know i would like for people to know that i have more depth as an individual than just my face value you know and i believe that as a woman i'm a very interesting woman because more because of my mind than because of my face um, so that's how i want people to come to my class because they admire my mind and my talent rather than my face yeah so um my classes cost um there's four thousand for four classes there's six thousand for six classes uh, i also charge eight thousand for nine classes depending on how many you can do in the month so yeah. you're taking class for both men and women yeah right now i'm teaching both men and women and you can see a lot of my students are here <laughs> Do you suggest children to start yoga? Yeah, I teach kids classes. From which age they should start? No, no, seven and up. So I mean, we've been a class I do one with my friend uh, who's an artist and we do art and yoga. So first I demonstrate for them. Then they draw the poses. Some of them who learn, who know how to write, they write the names of the poses. And it's interesting because I teach them the Sanskrit names. I don't teach them the English names because I want them to understand that Sanskrit is also part of our culture, right? It's part of our history. So um, they learn names like Adhamukha Swanasana as opposed to downward facing dog Shudu. So it's interesting. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe the 50 that I'm teaching will not do it, but I'm hoping that out of the 50, maybe six will do it. In Bangladesh, mostly women love to remain uh, engaged in traditional jobs. So you are uh, doing completely different thing. And uh, 
uh, I would say that you are unstoppable. So what uh, keeps you uh, moving? I mean, what uh, encourages you to keep going? I like what I do. I really like what I do. I enjoy teaching yoga to people. I love seeing that when people leave a room, they're calmer, they're more peaceful. And I know that when they go out into their lives after this class, they'll have a better day. So, I don't believe that we should be bound to 9 to 5 jobs. I think when you can break out of this, it's a form of rebellion. Um, I like being rebellious as an individual. I consider myself very rebellious. Um, so breaking out of the 9 to 5 for me was really interesting. You know, to, to show people that, hey, you can make a living by not doing the 9 to 5 and by doing something that you're very passionate about. Oh, that's really inspiring. They would love to be expert like you. I'm not an expert, I'm still learning, but thank you. So we would like to see uh, some techniques that you'd uh, love to suggest to our audience. Any techniques that uh, people can do. Uh, I mean, most of the people are busy. We want to know something, something that uh, keep us fit, but uh, we want to spend less time I think breathing, uh, breathing with awareness. I am not sure if I am not sure if I am not sure if I am not But breathing with awareness and also posture really matters. So, I am going to in order to be healthy, sit on the floor more. It sounds a bit crazy, but sit on the floor more. Learn to sit on the floor. Use less chairs, use less furniture. Um, eat, don't eat junk food. And I know it's yummy, maybe once a week you eat junk food. Um, Go to bed early, try to align with the circadian rhythm. So go to bed with the sun and wake up with the sun. That's a really good way of staying healthy and preventing disease. And as for yoga, you know, I think learn from a teacher because that's how you learn best. Would like to see some techniques from you live. Okay. Let's move on to that.